are you doing this? The film? Yeah. Because it's something that I just feel that I want to do it basically because I want to leave it behind. You know, I want something there that tells a true story about everything that happened. You know, to me. Not about anything else, but basically to me. What do you mean to you? Well, my life. What I've been going through. You know, there's like... You know, in a funny kind of way, I've been in my own prison for the last 25 years. You know? And I feel that, you know, everyone that thinks that, you know, you go into this witness protection or whatever and you have this, you know, fairy tale life afterwards, you know what it's really about. You know, that it's... It's a tough, tough struggle. You know? Well, can you expand on that for me? Like, what's this prison entail? Well, in my case, maybe 13 different name changes, 13 different locations to live in the United States where you don't know a soul. Um, you're alone. Um, you don't have a job. And the marshals, on the whole, they don't help you find a job. You have no work history. So when you go, all of a sudden, you're in this new spot that you think, you know, might be okay, they all are, they all turn out to be just like, you might as well be living in a foreign country. And then, like I said, your name is different, you know, and then you might be in Seattle for a year, and then you're in Denver for a year. So as soon as you get established in one spot where you could actually, you know, have some hope of beginning a life, usually you're getting moved again. And in my case, I was on this program for like well, over five years. And I got moved like about twice a year. You know, sometimes for security reasons, but most of the times just because they decided to move me. You know, so all of a sudden, you know, it's like, okay, I live in Seattle, and they just tell you, okay, you're leaving for Denver tomorrow. Yeah. So it's like kind of like by the time you get done in Denver, establishing a new identity and being able to make friends and, and you know, get a feel for where you live. You're going to Birmingham, Alabama. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's about it. Well, no, well, that's one side of it. Now, what happens after you leave the witness protection program? Have you been able to make a living in the last 20 years? Not really, no. I've been basically living on what the army gives me every month, or the government. You know, I get a pension from the military. And if I make any money, legitimately, they take that money off my pension. So, I mean, it, it, it balances out whether you go to work to make as much money as the government's going to give you for what you did in Vietnam. Uh, it's a strange way to live because it's never enough to live. It's enough to live if you live in places that are like out in the country, you know. Uh, but you, you, you really can't afford to live in any substantial city because it's just not enough money to pay rent and pay bills and buy food and, you know, exist. So it's kind of you're always after, after the program. I probably moved around more than I did when I was on the program. But you basically haven't really been able to make a living in all those years. That's no. substantial. Uh uh. No. And then this, you know, the art thing came along. And in the beginning, I made some good money. Um, and I thought that's the way the business was going to be, but it didn't turn out to be that way. It turned out to be a real cutthroat business, you know, with a lot of people that just bullshit you. And, you know, that's a tough way to make a living. You know? How has that affected you now that you see how difficult it is to be an artist and the way the art world is? Oh, it's like right now I'm just in a, in a funk where I don't even want to paint right now because so many people have made commitments 
okay, we're going to come and see your work. We're going to come and, you know, we want to buy a piece and blah, blah, blah. And they talk to you on the phone and then you never see or hear from them. They, they don't return your calls. Um, so it's not like uh, where I'm selling any art right now to make a living. I'm doing something else on the side um, to pick up a few extra bucks. But as far as, like I said, as far as surviving in a city, it's weird because in order to, for me to sell my art, I kind of have to be around either New York or Los Angeles or Chicago, someplace or Miami, someplace where there's a market. But for what I sell, I can't afford to live in any of those places. So it's like, it's almost, it's a catch-22.